Good evening, Black Sheep Squadron. This is Captain Ian Yeager. I'm doing a quick video for our mission aircrew training uh, covering grid systems. Unfortunately, I'm going to be missing the meeting, so I figured this was the next best way to get this. This video is going to cover both the CAP standard grid system as well as the cell grid system, sometimes called the new gridding system. We're also going to do some practice uh, problems at the very end of this video so that you guys can see the differences between the two. We're going to start a discussion on the CAP standard grid system, which was developed back in the 1960s and is based on a standard aeronautical sectional. In it, each grid is one quarter degree by one quarter degree, or a 15 minute square, and is assigned a number based on the northwesterly most point available in that sectional. Uh, for example, in the Denver sectional, there are 476 grids, that's 17 rows north and south, and 28 columns east and west. Each one of these grids can be further divided into our standard 7.5 by 7.5 minute quadrant using the designators Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. What we're looking at on the right is a blown up area of the Denver sectional, and that's Centennial Airport in the lower right. So for example, if we were looking to fly a standard grid over the airport, we would be looking at Denver 5-3 Delta. Again, that's a 7.5 by 7.5 minute grid. As you can see, there are some significant drawbacks to the CAP standard grid system. First off, it's based on aeronautical sectionals. So if you don't have a sectional, or if you're a ground team, or somebody who's not in CAP, uh, the system becomes quite cumbersome. It actually takes a really long time to grid these sectionals, so you'll often see air crew, pilots, observers, scanners that are using old sectionals, months, years even, that might not have some fairly significant safety issues uh, labeled on them. For example, new towers, windmills, and other things that could impede our low-level searches when we're flying low and slow. Furthermore, the Denver TAC area itself and Colorado in general actually cover several different sectionals. So if I'm trying to find uh, locations throughout our state, I may be looking on the Denver, the Cheyenne, or the Wichita sectionals to find these. And finally, it's very difficult to bring in outside help uh, when we're using this system. Because it's so difficult to find these grids, if we're bringing in somebody on short notice, if they need to find a grid, they either need to be provided with a gridded sectional or uh, they're just going to have to sit there for a few hours and draw everything out. So we'll come back to the CAP standard grid with some examples in just a moment, but let's switch over to the cell grid system. The system is much easier to use because it's super fast to acquire the grids that we're using, and we can use it on pretty much any map that has latitude and longitude lines on it. So for example, we can use this on sectionals, terminal area charts, WAX, we can use it on DeLormes, we can use it on USGS quadrangles, pretty much any map that has lat long on it. Finally, it's also easy for ground teams, outside agencies, and CAP members from other wings uh, who come out and help us and quite a few of the other wings have actually already switched over to this new system. So how does a cell grid system work? Well, it's based off of a five-digit number and letter combination using either none up to three letters, and the numbers designate the whole degree grid, so basically 60 minute by 60 minutes, and it's based on the southeast or the bottom right corner. So for example, the first two numbers in indicate the latitude, and in North America we're going to assume that's a north number. The second three numbers indicate the longitude, which we're going to assume is west. For example, Denver area basically falls into 39104. Now is actually a good time to review a quick point about latitude and longitude. Here in North America, the latitude increases going up and longitude increases going left which is why we actually choose that lower right-hand corner as we increase latitude and longitude. So here again, we're looking at the Denver area sectional. Uh, that's Denver International Airport and Centennial in the top left. And that encircled on the bottom right is our one degree by one degree designator of 39104. Each one of these 
degrees is divided into a 30 minute by 30 minute quadrant labeled A, B, C, or D. So for example, we're going to start looking again for our Centennial Airport, which is going to be at 39104 Alpha. We further divide that quadrant into four sections, again, A, B, C, and D. And these are now 15 minute by 15 minute sections. So again, following to Centennial, we're now in 39104 Alpha Charlie. And because we use a standard 7.5 by 7.5 minute grid as our grid search area, we're actually going to divide that last one into four more quadrants, again, A, B, C, and D. So in this case, Centennial Airport is going to be in 39104 Alpha Charlie Delta. Note that you don't actually have to use the three letters at the very end of this designator. In some cases, you actually want to supply the air crew or the ground team with a larger area either that 15 by 15, 30 by 30, or sometimes even that full one degree by one degree grid. In that case, you would simply look at 39104 Alpha Charlie, and that would block off most of that area over Centennial and downtown Denver. So this is where we actually get to put this to practice. Using the CAP standard grid, find the seven and a half by seven and a half minute grid that overlays Pueblo Airport, Four Corners Airport, and Fort Morgan Airports. Remember you're going to have a sectional designator as well as a number and then an alpha, uh, a letter designator for each one of these. Once you've found those, go ahead and find which airports are actually underneath the following grids. Denver 426 Delta, Denver 45 Alpha, and Wichita 173 Alpha. Go ahead and pause the video for a moment and go through these examples and we'll come back in just a second with the answers. Now that you've had a couple of moments to look for these, the designators you should have come up with for Pueblo would have been the Denver 195 Charlie, Four Corners Airport, again on the Denver sectional, even though it's down in New Mexico, it would have been Denver 348 Charlie, Fort Morgan, even though it's right there in Denver and well in our Colorado, is actually on the Cheyenne in Cheyenne 533 Delta. Furthermore, the three airports that you should have found are Chinle, Echo 91, Eagle County, and Eads, 97 Victor. And now let's do a little bit of practice using the cell grid system. Again, we're going to look for the 7.5 by 7.5 minute grid overlying these three airports, Pueblo, Grand Junction, and Fort Morgan. So what you're looking for is that five-digit number and the three-letter designator to go for each one of these. Also, when you found those, go ahead and find which airport actually underlies the following three designators, 40107 Delta Bravo Alpha, 37102 Charlie Bravo Bravo, and 40104 Alpha Delta Charlie. Go ahead and take a couple of minutes again, pause this video, and when we come back, we'll have the answers up. And now that we're back, the grids that you should have landed on for Pueblo would be 38104 Delta Alpha Charlie, for Grand Junction, 38108 Charlie Delta Delta, and for Fort Morgan, 40103 Charlie Alpha Delta. Also, the three airports you should have found would have been Yampa Valley, Springfield, and Crop Air. And Crop Air is actually a private airport just north of uh, the Denver area. Now we'll do one last example just to prove a point. If you're in a class, go ahead and split half the class and have half the class look for this location using the cap grid and the other half using the cell grid. Use whatever methods you have handy to find it. We're looking for the intersection of Oilwell Road and Harrisonville Road in Rama, Colorado, zip code 80832. It's actually just southwest of Limon, and you can go ahead and use a DeLorme, Google Maps, whatever you have handy. See which way is easier of actually finding uh, the required grid. Hope you guys had a good time with this video. If you have any questions, find one of your mission pilots, one of your senior mission scanners and observers, 
and ask them whatever questions you have. We'll be happy to discuss this. Thanks. Have a good day.